Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody. Today we're going to be doing a back to basics build for our gunner class and we have our minigun, our revolver, and all the other things that come with gunner. Our sticky grenade too because it is our first grenade. First up we have our minigun and the minigun is kind of a strange weapon to get used to. Um, I have heard that quite a bit. A lot of people didn't like the gunner's minigun when they first started playing the game. Maybe they grew an appreciation to it later because starting out with it, it is a little bit weird. In tier one, we have three options where we have cooling. This will just cool down our gun quicker. That can be useful. It makes it so there's less downtime overall. I don't take this one that often, but it's not a terrible option. We have increased rate of fire. Now the increased rate of fire is a little bit weird with the minigun just because of the way the minigun works, but you're just getting more DPS out of this and that's all you really need to know. So that is a nice improvement. Or we have improved platform stability. This increases the accuracy. The minigun can be quite accurate after you fired it for a substantial amount of time or well, a sustained amount of time. This makes it a little bit better. So you can kill things at longer ranges easier and the minigun does have really good range at least once it's fully spun up. Before that, it does kind of struggle and it's not really great outside of medium range. This certainly helps it and that's usually why I take it. But any of these in tier one are pretty decent options. Our second option is either ammo or damage. Both these are really good. I usually go with ammo if I'm running standard minigun just because I like the 3000 rounds with it so we can potentially last a little bit longer throughout a mission. Gunner usually doesn't struggle with ammo that much. Um, compared to the other classes, they're not like Scout or NG that can run through their ammo really quick. You can with certain builds and certain overclocks, but usually the minigun is pretty good on sustained fire. But if you want more damage and faster killing, you can go with the high velocity rounds too. In tier 3, we also have three really good options. We have hardened rounds to get armor breaking, uh, stun to stun things for longer. This is a 3 second stun and a 40% chance of doing it. That is pretty nice. And then we have blow through rounds that let us punch through one enemy and potentially into a second one. Blow through rounds can potentially get you the most value here, but it honestly depends on what you want. Stuns can be pretty useful against things like Mactera and even larger targets like Praetorians since the stun actually lingers for an okay amount of time then. Praetorians and larger enemies tend to have some sort of stun resist, so going with extra stun is okay for them and it's good for some of the smaller enemies. And armor breaking can let you kill big things a little bit quicker. It's really good to take on like dreadnought missions because if you get the twins you can just tear their armor right off with this. But any of them are fine. I usually go with blow through rounds. In tier 4 we have damage once your gun is fully uh, spun up so you get 15% more damage. That can be nice. We have the faster charge ability. This just spins it up faster. I really like this one. This is probably my favorite mod for the minigun because it lets you get into the fight much quicker. And then we have magnetic bearing which uh, makes it so your spin down time is slower. So your gun stays more accurate for a longer period period of time. Most of the time I'll just go with the lighter barrel assembly. And then in tier 5 we have three really interesting options. We have aggressive venting. This makes it so when your gun fully overheats it deals fire damage to everything around you. It also scares everything around you and your minigun will decrease in heat much faster. So it can be up and firing a lot quicker. If you're struggling with the minigun and you find it overheating a lot, aggressive venting might be a really good option for you. And it's also really good with some of the overclocks. Our second option is cold as the grave. This uh, makes so every kill that we get cools down the minigun little bit by little bit. This is really good for crowds. And then we have hot bullets, which makes it so once we hit the red heat meter, then we will start firing out fire bullets from our minigun and we'll get a little bit more damage. This one can also be pretty good, but it's a little bit more difficult to manage. It's just more sustained damage overall though. So if you like that, hot bullets might be for you. For a secondary, we're bringing in the Bulldog Heavy Revolver, which is probably one of my favorite secondaries in the entire game. Bulldog Heavy Revolver does really high damage and it's very accurate. And that's really all it needs to do for a secondary weapon. It's great for single target damage and it's great for uh, long range accuracy. It's also fairly flexible as to how you'd like to build. In tier one, we have faster reloads or better accuracy. The accuracy I find a little bit less useful because the revolver is already quite accurate. So I usually go with the faster reload speed, but if you want to be using it uh, at longer ranges, then accuracy is a really good option too. In tier two, we have increased damage, recoil reduction, and ammo. Usually I go with extra ammo here because the, the revolver does not have the most amount of ammo. You don't necessarily need the damage. The revolver already hits really hard as it is. Uh, just the base revolver with nothing on it can already one-shot headshot grunts on any difficulty, which is pretty good. And uh, the extra damage is just not super necessary. Recoil reduction can be nice if you like firing the revolver in quick succession, and especially if you like getting up close and using it. But usually I'll go with the extra ammo just so that we can use a little bit more. 
In tier 3, we have blow through rounds where we can punch through three enemies, so you can potentially get a lot of value out of the revolver. Explosive rounds, which cuts down on our main damage, but now our revolver does area damage. This can actually be pretty decent if you combine it with the neurotoxin coating because it can splash damage to multiple enemies and poison multiple enemies. And then our last option is hollow point rounds, which increases our weak spot damage even further by another 35%, so we have 60% weak spot damage. That is really good. It makes it so you can pick off things like tri jaws really easy and uh, acid spitters really easy. And that's usually why I take it because that, those are the targets that I'm trying to kill quickly with this. Tier four, we have extra ammo or extra damage. Again, I like the extra ammo. We don't really need extra damage, but it wouldn't be bad to take one ammo and one damage if you like. That can also help for certain enemies. And then in tier five, we either have Deadeye, which is no uh, aim penalty when moving. That can be really useful because again, I'm usually kind of using this as like a sniper rifle. Just pull it out, shoot something, put it back away, and then go back to my primary weapon. Or we could go with Neurotoxin Coating, which every bullet has a 50% chance of triggering Neurotoxin, which will deal damage over time, and Poison Enemies, which also slows them down and kind of highlights them. Going over the rest of our equipment, we have the Pickaxe. Pickaxe you can kind of build however you'd like. I like going with Power Attack and Better Weight Balance so that we can use our Power Attacks more often, but any of these are fine in Tier 2. For our Shield, this is usually the way I like building the Shield, which is bigger area, longer lasting Shield, and more duration on that Shield, so we have a really long lasting shield. This gives us nine seconds of shield and it's pretty big so we can cover usually multiple teammates if they go down so we can pick them up. We can also cover a large area if we need to defend like the drill dozer because you can throw this on it and bugs will try to scatter from the shield. Zipline launcher you can also build however you'd like. This is the way that I usually build it going with increased angle. That just makes it a little bit easier to get to certain areas. The reach can be kind of useful on certain maps but it's not always necessary. There's not always going to be maps where there's 50 meters of range that you really need. It might be useful on like point extracts and oil rig missions though. Extra ammo is also pretty good. Extra reach because it's our only option in tier two. And then we either have disconnection protection or increased motor retraction. Both these are pretty good. I usually go with disconnection protection because currently I believe it's still bugged. And if anybody interacts with your zip line and then hops off it, they actually have fall damage reduction until they go down. Going with the sticky grenades, like I said earlier, these ones are pretty good. We get a lot of them. They fear enemies. They do high de single target damage. They can do decent crowd control. So uh, pretty standard grenade. Nothing real spectacular with them. Armor. Um, I'm going with my usual armor setup, which is bigger mineral bag, resilience, uh, reactive armor, and breathing room. Gunner has one of the best passives with the explosives because this makes it so exploders can't kill you that easily. Just like in my other videos, I would recommend you upgrading your suit entirely because you do get extra health every so often. For passive perks, we have Sweet Tooth. This gives us more healing from red sugar as well as bonus movement speed when we take red sugar. The movement speed can be nice. Mostly it's the extra healing. Um, Gunner, at least with the minigun, doesn't need Born Ready. I would recommend taking Born Ready over uh, Sweet Tooth in any of the other builds though if you're using the hurricane or the auto cannon because they do take a long time to reload but with the minigun we don't have to worry about reloading it can also just be useful with the minigun anyway because it will reload your revolver and reload your zipline launcher thorns keep little things off us this can be kind of nice it's not entirely necessary with gunner um this is probably the build where it's i guess the most necessary compared to the others because the hurricane and the auto cannon have really good crowd control resupply to get our health back so that we can just stay healthy and we can instantly reload our guns this will act kind of like a born ready then i'm running dash to get out of bad situations this one is really good with gunner because if you have this plus your shields you essentially have two potential escapes really good on gunner and then we have beastmaster this is just because i'm playing solo and i want to have a steve to fight for us if we were playing in multiplayer i would recommend going with either iron will or going with field medic both of these are really good in multiplayer settings just as they are but they're especially good on gunner your shield can uh, potentially save multiple people. It can also potentially save you if you're using Iron Will. So you can use uh, Iron Will to go res somebody, throw a shield down where both you guys are at. Once you go down, then your teammate can res you and you should be fairly safe inside your shield for a couple more seconds. On the other hand, uh, Field Medic's really good because you can res somebody once and you can res people faster. So if you do happen to be the last one up, you can throw your shield down, probably res the whole team before um, your shield even runs out and then you get another chance at this. Let's go on this salvage mission. I had a different salvage mission it planned, but the mission's changed and it has critical weakness on it and I don't think that would be a fair test for this. So uh, we're bringing Bosco along too, since we're playing solo. Uh, this is the usual way that I build Bosco. Faster digging, rockets, one down, cryo rockets, electric rounds. You can kind of build Bosco however you'd like, though. Um, especially since the cryo didn't really get nerfed, but other things that uh, were affected by cryo kind of got buffed. You should also grab your daily beer whenever you can, assuming it will help you for this mission. This one definitely will. Red Rock is one of the best uh, beers in the game. This gives you extra health. 
And this is stacking with even more health that we have on our weapons, so that is pretty nice. Or sorry, not on our weapons, on our suit. There's a tyrant weed? <laughs> Wait, I didn't hit a tyrant weed. What caused the tyrant weed to get angry? Oh, maybe it was, oh. Yeah, okay, so there's a tyrant weed, but I'm not the one making it angry. <laughs> Let's grab that. Huh. Oh, it's right here. It could be mushrooms that are hitting it, I guess. Alright, uh, well, let's fight a tyrant weed then. Luckily, Gunner is pretty good at fighting this. Gunner's generally pretty good at fighting most things, in all honesty. Okay, um... <laughs> There's actually a lot of stuff in here. Oh, that's not good. Alright, let's move around here. Generally, when I'm running around, I do like to have the revolver out with Gunner. That's kind of personal preference, though. Oh, crap. Alright, hang on. Let's toss our shield down here when things get dicey. We'll clear up all the smaller stuff first. That's more important than actually dealing with the Tyrant Weed. Because we can deal with that later. Yeah, it was all the mushrooms hitting it. <laughs> try using our dash to get potentially out of a bad situation and our shield to potentially save us here because we don't have a whole lot of options besides this at the moment. This is not good. Um, one thing that Gunner is lacking is kind of mobility. And I think that might come to bite us here just in a second or so. Okay. Oh, Tyrant Weed's in. Yeah, <laughs> alright. Vulnerable again. Let's get to a safer area then. Clear up all the smaller bugs. At least if we kinda can. Uh oh. And potentially find some HP. Alright, this is kind of a. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of a dangerous spot to be in. So, I'm just gonna run away. <laughs> At least most of the way away. And we're just gonna keep using the minigun to uh, get us some extra damage then. Ah, let's go over here. Over here seems much safer. <laughs> Alright, good thing I didn't grab, get grabbed by a leech or anything either. Okay, so kind of a crazy start there. We do kind of need to kill off everything else first. Oop. Explosives like this are actually pretty good on the Praetorians too, because it has a high chance of clearing them away. Even the other ones like you see. Oh. Oh, I found the elf. Oh, there's a meteor coming in, too. <laughs> Alright, let's get rid of the breeder. I'm gonna use up pretty much half my ammo at the start of this. That's okay. Oh, command Bosco to go fight that. Oh, explosives, too. <laughs> nope. More explosives. Alright, let's dodge the meteors really quick. Hopefully that'll get rid of most of those jellyfish. Yeah, I don't think it will. I think they... Yeah, they ran through it. Alright. I always remember you have your pickaxe, too. Your pickaxe can be used as a weapon, and should be used as a weapon. Mostly with power attacks, but against smaller enemies, you can also use it just to, uh, sort of bog them. Alright. Huh. Another Praetorian. Heh <laughs> Alright, this shouldn't be like your typical has five mission, but <laughs> sometimes they do happen like this where you just get non-stop attacked at the very start of the game. Let's try to find some nitra. Luckily, since we're on a salvage mission, we do have certain guaranteed spots of nitra. 
with the mini meals. Mini meals will always give you a set amount of nitra. Um, it's between 40 and 60, I believe. So if you're really hurting for nitra like I am currently, you can potentially get it out like that. Um, and that's probably what I'm going to have to do. Because where the weed is currently sitting is going to be a little bit problematic. All right, let's fix this one up. Um, and then I really do need to get nitro, so we're going to try to rush that. All right, we got 49 nitro right now. We need 80. Um, okay, there's some right here that we can kind of grab. It's a little bit dangerous, but it's okay. There's also more down there with the plant. I think that was from loot bugs getting exploded from either the meteors or from the mines that were there. So let's try to uh, try to get that nitra. Well, we sort of can. Not always a great thing to be around the weed, but okay, let's try to knock it to at least the. Eh, all right. Couldn't knock it all the way down, but that's all right. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to try to grab all this. I'm going to just try to dodge the weed, and we're going to hope for the best here. Dang, all you little loot bugs. All right. Another shield. Okay, nitrous full. Molly. Molly. <laughs> all right, let's get out of here. We do not want to be trapped down there with all of the weed parts. Or all these mines right here. I'm gonna grab this. We're gonna get two resupplies. We're gonna go back over there and then we're gonna kill that weed. Let's try to pick off this and try to do as much damage as we can. The weed is also particularly weak to uh, melee damage. Okay. <laughs> Let's kill a horde of the grunts real quick. Again, shield is really useful for doing stuff like this. And once you get the, the hang of it, you'll probably know when the shield's about to run out. Oh, our dash wasn't up. Hmm. All right, Bosco. Thank you for the res, buddy. All right, let's head out. Trying to get back to this sort of open area. Hopefully Bosco's not attacking the plant. I'm not sure though. I also got a Steve and I don't know where he is. Hopefully he didn't die already. Okay. Let's be done with that. Always be sure to kill the healing plants first whenever they spawn. The rest don't matter as much. And again, if you're playing Gunner, you can always get inside of your shield, at least if you have shields. Alright. We'll just do really high damage here with our minigun because. Oh, sorry, little loot bug. The minigun is great for high damage. If you find it overheating a little bit, try switching back and forth between your primary and secondary more often. Alright. There's been a lot of Praetorians this match, too. All right. I don't know if this will kill it. Nah, not quite. All right. Now oh, we have a grabber. <laughs> All right. Let's get rid of this weed. Now, let's take care of the tri jaws. And everything else is trying to kill us right now. Now one thing that I should go over that I was doing during the fight but I wasn't really talking about is jumping with the minigun. You'll get really used to this if you use one particular overclock for the minigun. But whenever you're firing the minigun and moving, you are substantially slower as I'm sure you're aware. One way to kind of deal with that is to uh, pause your fire when you're jumping because your momentum will still carry you a little ways. So right before you're about to jump, you know, stop shooting your minigun. 
And this way you can still move around the place pretty quickly. It does get... It does get a little bit weird, and it takes time to get used to. But it can help. Obviously you don't need to do that if you're inside your shield, because it'll be fine then. That might be a detonator, actually. No, no, a Dorian. Okay. It's throwing me off ever since they changed the... No, it is, that is a detonator. It was both. All right. Well, good thing we didn't start this up then. Because getting a detonator in this is really rough. It's not so bad if we're gunner, because the detonator and pretty much all bugs will try to avoid the shield. The, the only exception to that would be like the robots and the rollers. The robots will try to go through the shield, at least the standard patrol bots. Um, the turrets obviously can't unless you can throw it on them. And the shredders will try to stay outside of it. I think Nemesis will try to grab you through it though, if you're too close. So, honestly this won't be too bad for us. Because if we blow this section up, oop, or eat my gun. Gotta be careful of that. <laughs> Although, if you do overeat your gun, it's not the worst thing in the world. Especially if you have aggressive venting, and like I said, if that is becoming a real struggle for you, it might be a really good option to take. Because it does give you even more crowd control. Another use for your zip lines too, is if you do have a scout and they're trying to get things up on the ceiling, you can actually set up safety lines for them. So if you just kind of spider web this out, um, then anybody falling to this, this can also be really good on like point extracts because sometimes they are very vertical. <laughs> it's alive and moving. Trust me, I also got a play guard too. Probably just get written off for using that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can use them as safety lines because if anybody falls down, they can potentially grab your zip lines, and if they grab it, then they don't take any fall damage. So, pretty useful. Let's clear all this up really quick. Oh wait, I need a... I need Dorian. I need another Steve. Yeah, let's fight for a Steve. Let's get this set up. We're gonna use our revolver at a distance. Honestly, we could use the minigun at a distance too. But I do like having the revolver out just for... Uh, kinda shooting at some of these further bugs. Then once they get close, then I can start up the minigun. <laughs> Kind of the same thing if I'm using the auto cannon or the hurricane. Hurricane maybe a little bit less. Because that one can be pretty accurate at long range too. The revolver's also pretty nice if you see uh, web spitters just around, because you don't need to hit them in the head. Just a body shot will kill them. Right. Now I'm gonna try to hold off on using my shield when I can. Obviously, if anybody goes down, you can use your shield to uh, create a safety zone so that you can res them. And if you start getting a bit overwhelmed here, throwing down a shield is a really good way to hold the rest of the area. Yeah, it works the same way if you are doing like an escort mission, or you have a black box mission on a deep dive, something like that. The shield is always very useful. Gotta remember that I still need to reload my revolver. All right, now that that's done with, let's move out of the zone. Kind of get us some space. Pick off any immediate threats like slashers. Again, on any difficulty, you can one-shot headshot slashers too, which is pretty nice. Uh, you can two-shot, at least with the current setup. Try Jaws as well. Uh, I believe you went with both the damages you could body shot them. I think that's what you need. I could be wrong. Alright. Let's get this ready. Fortunately, this detonator did not blow up quite the way I thought it would. It's going to be causing us a little bit more problems. Alright, I'm going to grab another one of these. In this area, we could stand up higher, which is probably better for us as Gunner. Um, this spot's not way great, but... <laughs> If we can at least see everything coming, we can kind of shoot it beforehand. The gunner's got quite a bit of firepower. We can also use our grenades, again, to potentially scare something like Praetorians away. That will expose their weak spot a little bit. 
Make it a little bit easier for us to kill them. Take off immediate threats right away, and then kind of switch back and forth between our guns. Again, where I'm standing is not the greatest spot, but it's okay enough. Sorry, Steve. Alright. Good job, Steve. Good boy. Pick off all of this stuff as we can. A lot of spitters this match, do. Again, this probably won't be typical of even it has five dive, but it does happen every once in a while. Or, sorry, not dive, just mission. But it does happen occasionally. Hmm, there we go. All right, we're good here. We still have two downs. We only got to survive for another 90 seconds. If you start getting overwhelmed here, uh, be sure to throw down your shields when you can. Just gonna keep using my guns as I see necessary. Thank you, Bosco, for getting rid of stuff. And we'll grab resupplies if we find those necessary too. We can even throw down our shield to get a resupply easier. And this is a good option too if you find teammates are low on health, even if you're not. Because if you do this, so long as there's not rollers around, it's pretty much a guarantee your teammates are going to be able to get their resupply. And, you know, just having your teammates alive is generally pretty good. <laughs> you could also even give some of your resupplies over to teammates, too. Since usually you're not hurting for them too much. safe location and we'll use our shield once again to you know be uh okay <laughs> let's be on our way <laughs> usually if the situation is just survive gunner is probably one of the better ones for surviving they're also generally one of the better ones for clutching for the team mostly from their shield it's really useful to potentially uh, res down to people. So let's see how many kills. We I don't think we had that many kills. Yeah, 250 kills. It's just we had a lot of big things to kill. <laughs> Since we had the Tyrant Weed. Yeah, we got a lot of XP from the Tyrant Weed. Good from the Play Guards. And we also got the Elf too, so. Extra everything that game. 